Good morning, dear people of St. David's on the Hill. My name is Jennifer West. I am the interim rector. We welcome you to our home where we are filming a lot of the service for Advent 4. I would like to thank the D. Tomas's family, especially Alexander and Harrison for reading today, Alan Cartenoir and Andrea and Joseph Hutnick for the music. Our Christmas Eve service will begin at 5 p.m. It will be on our website and on Facebook. It is virtual. Please go to the e-lamp to see why we had to make that decision. This morning is an agape meal, so please get a piece of bread and a sip of beverage. In an agape meal, the elements are blessed, not consecrated, but it gives us an opportunity to share the uh, symbolic bread and wine together. So open your hearts and settle your spirits as we worship together. Amen. Blessed are you, Sovereign Lord, merciful and gentle. To you be praise and glory forever. Your light has shone in our darkened world through the childbearing of Blessed Mary. Grant that we who have seen your glory may daily be renewed in your image and prepared like her for the coming of your Son, who is the Lord and Savior of all. Blessed be God forever. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, you exalted the humble and meek. Give us humble and contrite hearts. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you grew towards birth in the virgin's womb be planted also in our hearts and lives. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Holy Spirit, you overshadowed Mary that she might become the God-bearer. Fill us with your heavenly gifts. Lord, have mercy. 
Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who in Jesus Christ has given us a kingdom that cannot be destroyed, forgive you your sins, open your eyes to God's truth, strengthen you to do God's will, and give you the joy of his kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Purify our conscience, almighty God, by your daily visitation, that your Son, Jesus Christ, at his coming, may find in us a mansion prepared for himself, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the first Samuel. When the king was settled in his house and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of the gods stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But the same night the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, Are you the one who to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day, but I have been moving about in a tent in a tabernacle, wherever I have moved about among all the people of Israel. Did I ever speak a word, a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus, the Lord of the hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep to, to be prince over my people of Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went, and I have cut off all your en enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people of Israel, and I will plant them so they may, they may live in their own place and be disturbed no more, and evil doers sh shall afflict them no more, as formerly from the time I appointed judges over my people of Israel, and I will give you rest from all your en enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares thee to the Lord and will make you a house, and your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me, and your throne shall be established forever. The word of the Lord. I will now breathe in Psalm 89, verses 1 through 4 and 19 to 26. Your love, O Lord, forever will I sing. From age to age, my mouth will proclaim your faithfulness. For I am persuaded that your love is established forever. You have set your faithfulness firmly in the heavens. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn an oath to David, my servant. I will establish your line forever and preserve your throne for all generations. You spoke once in a vision and said to your faithful people, I have set the crown upon a warrior and have exalted one chosen out of the people. I have found David my servant. With my holy oil have I anointed him. My hand will hold him fast, and my arm will make him strong. No enemies shall deceive him, nor any wicked man bring him down. I will crush his foes before him and strike down those who hate him. My faithfulness and love shall be with him, and he shall be victorious through my name. I shall make his dominion extend from the great sea to the river. He will say to me, you are my Father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. The second reading is a reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. Now to God, who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but is now disclosed, and the prophetic writings is made known to all the Gentiles, according to the command of the eternal God to bring about the obedience of faith. To the only wise God, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph 
of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But Mary was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor, David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Mary said yes, and it made all the difference in the world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Bear with me, please, as I start these reflections about the angel Gabriel's annunciation to, to, to the Virgin Mary with a story about a monkey. There is no disrespect, as you will see. A Hindu tale from the book, Soul Food, Stories to Nourish the Spirit and the Heart, tells about letting go. It reads, in India, Hunters had a proven way of catching monkeys. A half coconut would be hollowed out and a hole made that was only large enough to let a monkey's open hand pass through. The coconut was then pinned to the ground and tempting food placed beneath. A monkey would approach intent on getting hold of the food beneath the coconut. But alas, as soon as it grasped the food in its fist, it found itself unable to pull its hand and the food free of the coconut. Imprisoned, it would stay, caught by its own unwillingness to open its fist. Today's reading beg us to ponder our readiness to open our outstretched hands to God. The young, humble Virgin Mary had no hesitation in opening her hands to God. She lived in a little village called Nazareth. We have been there. Nazareth could not be any bigger, if it's even as big, as the distance from St. David's to Budlong Road and Oakland Avenue. It is small. It is on top of a steep hill that rivals the incline of College Hill in downtown Providence. 
and the church on the spot where Gabriel made the Annunciation to Mary is the fifth one built on that site. To see the locations where it was believed Mary and Joseph lived, you must descend down into areas that have been excavated, into very small earthen rooms. And I doubt that Joseph and Mary lived even a couple blocks apart, although it was the well that made the biggest impression. I estimate the well was probably as far away from Mary's house as Whole Foods is from St. David's. It was a slow, steep climb. And it is from these humble beginnings that Mary was raised. And when the able angel Gabriel came to her in her humility and openness, after a few intelligent questions, she said, yes. In contrast to King David that we hear about today in the second reading of Samuel. And I must say that in our contentious world, we can probably all identify very well with King David. He was Joseph's ancestor. His pedigree went way back to the beginning of the Bible. And God, as you heard, had taken him out of the pasture from being a sheep herder and made him king. He had gained control of Israel and Judah. His troops had captured Jerusalem. And God, indeed, in David, had fulfilled the promises that he made to the people in Genesis to provide land for the people. And so there was great fanfare and dancing, and David had brought with him the Ark of God, which had always been housed in a tent in Jerusalem. This is significant because the Ark of God, which symbolized the essence, the very essence and being of God, was portable. It moved around, all around creation. Well, after all this work and fanfare, David is resting. Now, he had the ark and must have been thinking about what's the logical next step after all this glory and effort. And so he decides to build a house of cedar for the ark of God. Prophet Nathan concurs, logical next step, I suppose. Let's, let, let's pause here. Let's pause here. Because St. David's, you are at a point where you must make some logical next steps. The pandemic will leave us in a different place. It will leave the world in a different place. There are some tough decisions that will meet, need to be discerned about your future. And so it's very tempting to look at the logical next steps based on our experience as compared to following Mary and saying, here I am God, let us know what it is that you will for us. So here's David's going to build the house. Prophet Nathan is with us. And then God speaks. He says to the prophet Nathan to tell Nathan to his servant, David, that God doesn't want to live in a house. That God chooses to move around with the people in a portable tent and tabernacle. Tabernacle. God continues with a warning, again to his servant, David. Remember where you came from, from the pasture following sheep. God reminds David that God has been with him everywhere. God has protected him, trounced his enemies, and will make David 
great, and God will find a place for the people of Israel. And God concludes, Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. We've all been in David's shoes, haven't we? We go ahead and, and we make plans to the best of our abilities, looking at the pros and the cons. We make lists without considering what God wants for us, without praying to God to see what God's will is for us. We all know that it can sure be hard sometimes to get that fist out of that coconut. And then there's Mary. For the first time, we hear the name Jesus, the long-awaited Messiah, who will shake the world to its core. As Christmas beckons, and the manger awaits empty. We are faced again this Sunday, the 4th of Advent, with the juxtaposition of how, how open we are being and will be to God in our lives. Will we fall into the predicament of David and think, we know what's best? Or will we open our hearts and minds like Mary and be guided by God? Surely, opening our hearts and minds takes courage and patience and faith. But as the angel said to Mary today, with God, Nothing, nothing is impossible. Engrave that on your hearts, please, St. David's, as you consider the future of your ministry to your neighborhood and the world. In Christ's name, amen. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world, for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace, we especially pray for our service members, Jake Knight, Elizabeth Butler, Matthew Pava, and George Frank. Let us pray to the Lord. For the just and proper use of your creation, for the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression, we command to your protection our first responders who are on the front lines during this COVID pandemic, especially Lynn Shore, Cheryl Basha, Lindsay Bain, and Alan Cartnoir. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, for those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy, we remember those who are sick, especially Angelica, Diane, John, Carol, Bob, Jim, Vincent, Martha, Michael, Richard, Lauren, David, Frank, Bob, MJ, Brad, Paul, Ronnie, Donald, and Eleanor. For the peace and unity of the Church of God, for all who proclaim the gospel, 
and all who seek the truth. For the Right Reverend Nicholas Nisley, our bishop, for Michael, our presiding bishop, and for all bishops and other ministers, for all who serve God in God's church. Please take a moment of silence to pray for the special needs and concerns of this congregation. God, I would ask that you work into the hearts of those who say that they do not find virtual worship to be as fulfilling as being in person. We can certainly appreciate that, dear Lord, as you came in the flesh to be among us. But may you prompt them to do the best they can and to be with each other in spirit as we worship virtually. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life and for the hope and promise and excitement of the COVID vaccine. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. Let us say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Again, we are going to share together an agape meal. And if you haven't done so, I would encourage you to get a piece of bread or a cracker and some sort of beverage, wine or juice or water. And we will bless this food and drink. We will not consecrate it, we will bless it. And then we will share it together. And I thank those who responded positively to the agape meal we had last week. And we will make this more of a regular part of our virtual worship together, including on Christmas Eve. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, creator of the universe. You bring forth bread from the earth. You have fed us with the bread of life in the body of your Son. Feed us now with your presence among us and your presence in your word. As grain scattered upon the earth is gathered into one loaf, so gather your church in every place into the kingdom of your Son. To you be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, creator of the universe. You create the fruit of the vine and you refresh us with the cup of salvation in the blood of Jesus Christ, crucified yet risen. May the time come quickly when we can share that cup again, even as you are with us now in our very thirst for you. Glory to you forever and ever. Amen. And now let us please share the bread and the wine together.
with love and compassion. Come, Lord Jesus, with judgment and mercy. Come, Lord Jesus, in power and glory. Come, Lord Jesus, in wisdom and truth. Come, Lord Jesus. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. May the sun of righteousness shine before you and scatter the darkness from before your path. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and those you love and pray for now and forever. Amen. As we await our coming Savior, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen. Thank you.